Sutra. The knots must be untied successful, successively. When the six are released, even the one ceases to be. Select an organ preferred for perfect penetration. Enter the flow and realize proper enlightenment. Commentary: The knots must be untied successively. It is necessary to follow an order in releasing the knots. How does one release them successively? How do they get bound together in the first place? You ask. To begin with, the nature of the treasury of the first common is not subject to production and extinction, but confusion takes on the aspect of emptiness. Delusion and obscurity make emptiness. At that point, ignorance arises. Therefore, although the nature of the treasury of the first common is neither produced nor destroyed, relying on truth, a falseness arises, and with it, the mind subject to production and extinction, a consciousness. This consciousness divides into the sixth, seventh, and eighth consciousnesses. But the thoughts of the eighth consciousness, which is founded, On ignorance that creates production and extinction is the nature of the treasury of the first common, which is not subject to production or extinction. Its source is the pure nature and bright substance of the eternal true mind. Relying, relying in, relying on truth and falseness arises. The treasury of the first common changes into the alaya consciousness, the eighth consciousness, also called the storehouse consciousness. The eighth consciousness is the basis for the existence of the five skandhas: form, feeling, thought, activity, and consciousness. Starting with the skanda of consciousness, one progresses to the skanda of activity. This is the seventh consciousness, the manas consciousness, more mature, also called the transmitting consciousness, transmutu. This consciousness transmits messages from the sixth consciousness to the eighth consciousness. It forms the activity skanda. The next skanda is that of thought. This is the sixth consciousness, the white mind consciousness. The feeling skanda is the first five consciousnesses of the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and and body. The skandhas of feeling, thought, activity, and consciousness correspond to one knot each. The form skanda counts as two knots because it is a quasa. First, the six knots start with the eighth consciousness and progress through the seventh and the sixth. And then through the five, with the existence of the five skandhas, the five tabudities come into being, producing all kinds of obstructions. If we want to untie these knots, we must first stop tracing after the skanda of form. Once these two knots are broken open, then the other skandhas of feeling, thought, activity, and consciousness are released as well. The six knots are all untied. The knots must be untied successively because the skanda form is composed of cause knots, while the remaining skandhas of feeling, thought, activity, and consciousness are extremely subtle. So why do they begin their formation from the inside and work outward? You wonder. It is because the eighth consciousness is the first to arrive at conception. It all starts with the eighth consciousness. The five skandhas and the eighth consciousness become bound together. In the knot of birth and death, it starts with the eighth consciousness. You release it by starting with the form skandha. The process that can be likened to removing clothes. You take off an outer layer, and an inner layer is revealed. In this way, you take off layer after layer until you have removed them all. Then the knot is untied. That's how it's explained. But actually, if you release one knot, 
the other five will disappear as well. The verse says, when the six are released, even the one ceases to be. When the six sense organs, the knots are freed, the one disappears as well. This will, is, uh, will be explained in detail later in the text. Select organ preferred for perfect penetration. The method for cultivation is a blind effort right at the entrance to the six organs. That is, the eyes are not turned by forms, the ears are not turned by sounds, the nose are not turned by smells, the tongue is not turned by flavors, the body is not turned by objects of touch, and the mind is not turned by dramas. You transform what takes place at the entrance to the six organs. You return the light to illumine within. You do not seek outside. God and gather in your body and mind, seek within yourself. In cultivating the six organs, you have to select one organ which will lead you to perfect penetration. The Buddha has already laid the groundwork for this. He discussed the efficacy of 1200 of each of the organs and told Ananda to see which organs were more complete. The eyes, for instance, are not complete, but the ears are. The tongue and the mind are also complete organs. Three are complete and three are not. You are to select to a complete organ and then develop your skill in cultivation with regard to it. Shakyamuni Buddha has tacitly implied that the organ of the ear will lead to perfect penetration, but he was not come right out and said it. He wants Ananda to make his own selection. He wants him to figure it out for himself. Select an organ preferred for perfect penetration and enter the flow of realized proper enlightenment. Enter the flow of drama nature of the sages. Turn against the flow of the six sense objects of an ordinary person. After entering the flow, one can accomplish proper enlightenment that is become a Buddha. Sutra, extremely subtle, the Adana consciousness makes patterns of habit that flow on in torrents. Fearing you will confuse the truth with what is not, I really tell you all of, of all this. Commentary this is drama which Shakyamuni Buddha really speaks. I really tell you of all this. I don't ever like to explain this drama. Just imagine, Shakyamuni Buddha really explained this drama for the great Ahas, the great Bodhisattvas, and the great Bishops. And yet, how easily we have had the opportunity to hear this wonderful drama spoken by the Buddha. Extremely subtle. The Adana, Tuana consciousness. This is a very subtle consciousness, even more so than the eighth. The Adana is also called the pure consciousness. It is the seed of purity. This exceptionally fine and subtle consciousness makes patterns of habit that flow on in torrents. This is the source of our birth and death. As soon as the falseness arises in the one truth of that subtle consciousness, one thought of ignorance, it turns into habits that come on like a torrent. Nothing will curtail them. Here our torrent refers to our birth and death, being born and dying in birth and death again and again, sometimes as a person, sometimes an animal, sometimes born as a god, sometimes falling into the hills, spinning seriously, patterns of habit flow on in torrents. Fearing you will confuse the truth with what is not, I really tell you of all this. Why isn't the true drama talked about? Why don't I express the subtle wonder of the genuine drama for you? I'm afraid people will think that the true is false and that they will think what is really false is true. For example, you were determined to add right to enlightenment. 
and by doing so you just add confusion to confusion and become doubly deluded. Normally I don't explain this wonderful drama. I speak the small vehicle doctrines about you small vehicle people. Genuine, wonderful drama of the Great Assembly is something you've never I've never told you about before. I haven't done so because your pupil of the small vehicle still don't have the stature to hear it. You haven't turned from the small toward the great, so even when I wanted to explain it, I refrained. Sutra, with your own mind, you grasp a drawn mind. What is not illusory turns into illusion. If you don't grasp, there is no non-illusion. If even non-illusion does not arise, how can illusory dramas be established? This is called the wonderful lotus flower, the regal violet gem of enlightenment. Commentary with your own mind. You grasp a drawn mind. Living beings do not understand that the division of seeing and the division of appearances are manifestations of the mind alone. The three realms come only from consciousness. The myriad drama spring only from the mind. Not understanding that all kinds are made from the mind alone, they become attached to the same division, that is to their own subjective viewpoint, their eighth consciousness, the appearance and division refers to external objects. Basically, the division of seeing and the division of appearances are both empty and false. They are figments of your own mind. Most people never realize that they should turn the lights and illumine within. They just keep seeking outside themselves. They get confused about the true and choice after what is false. If you realize that the mind red dramas come from your mind alone, if you recognize your own mind and see your nature, you will know that the two divisions of seeing and appearances arise from your own mind. If you understand the bright substance and pure nature of your eternal true mind, you will not run outside but will return home. What is not illusory turns into illusion because living beings are confused about what is true and traced after what is false. They come to have doubts about what basically was not illusory and so becomes illusory. You must be able to not grasp at these illusory appearances. Not grasping at is the important point here. The reason most people are confused by the six sense organs and six sense objects is that they grasp at the two divisions of seeing and appearances. They become attached to the belief that their capacity to see is the division of seeing and that what they say really exists. They don't know what it is empty and false, it is illusory. If you don't grasp, there is no illusion. There isn't any non-illusion. If even non-illusion does not arise, what is not empty and false basically does not come into being. There is no place where it is produced. How can illusory dramas be established? How can Empty illusory drama exist, they don't. This is called the wonderful lotus flower, wonderful and subtle. The lotus flower arises from the mud but is not defined by it. It grows in mud but is itself pure, and the flower and fruit appear simultaneously. It is the regal viral gem of enlightenment. Vara is the most durable and toughest substance. It represents wisdom. Nothing can destroy or break through genuine wisdom. Rigo means free and easy as a king is. Gem of enlightenment refers to our true might. If you can keep from grasping of the two divisions of thing and appearances, if you can turn it to the source, then you can return to the nature of the treasury of the first common by turning the consciousnesses into wisdom. Once the turning is accomplished, the two divisions 
turn into a wonderful lotus flowers, the dream of enlightenment. Sutra, in this summer party that is likened to illusion, transcend all study instantly. Commentary is also called by another name. Samapati that is likened to illusion. Samapati is a Sanskrit word which means holding equally. That is the equal meaning of the power of samadhi and the power of wisdom. With wisdom, you can untie the six knots. With samadhi, you will not create the six knots. In this Samapati, one should transcend or study instantly. Instantly is literally in a finger snap. In no time at all, one transcends the positions in which there is still study and arrives at the position of no further study. That is the fourth version of Ahashi. The positions of the first, second, and third versions were where there is something left to study are transcend and are transcended in a finger snap. As one is certified to the fourth version, Ahashri. Sutra, Visa, Abhidharma, incomparable, is a single pathway to Nirvana's gate, taken by Bhagavans in all the ten directions. Commentary, Visa, Abhidharma, incomparable. Abhidharma translates as the previous, this refers to the kind of drama. The method being discussed is the single pathway through Nirvana's gate. It is the unsurpassed profound to untie the knots taken by Brangavans in all the ten directions. Bhagavan is the translated pronunciation poor Chiafan is found at the beginning of the fourth section of the Suragama. Mantra, it is a universal name for the Buddha, used by and recognized by Buddha's spirits and ghosts in referring to Buddha's. Here, Bhagavan is not translated because the, the original word includes six meanings. A translation can render only one meaning. The six meanings of Bhagavan are one comfortable the buddha's nature is comfortable in the same way that the name contemplate in comfort given to kwanin bodhisattva means that he is a comfortable bodhisattva two dazzling this means it describes the buddha's light which pervades the dharma realm three decorous decorous the Buddha is correct in his bearing and never lacks or lazy. We should try to be the same. When you listen to sutras, you should sit in an appropriately respectful manner. Don't lounge or slouch or stretch out. It should be as if the Buddha himself were before you speaking the drama. Since we believe in the Buddha, we should show our respect to him. We don't be lazy right before the Buddha's eyes when, when listening to sutras. You cannot lie down and go to sleep. You shouldn't lie down when reading sutras either. I've told you before that if you do that, you will become a snake in the future. Snakes have to lie down even when they move from place to place. They can't stand up when you read a sutra. You should sit up straight and perhaps place it on the table in front of you. If you have one degree of respect, you increase your wisdom by one degree. If you have ten degrees of respect, you increase of you, in, you increase your wisdom by ten degrees. If you have a hundred thousand or ten thousand degrees of respect, you increase your wisdom by the same amount. To also increase your good fruits, your good roots. The Vara Sutra says it clearly. There is a Buddha in any place that the Sutra text is found. A Buddha you respect will bring a response. 
If you like respect, there won't be a response. Consider it as if Shakyuni Buddha himself were lecturing on the lecturing the sutra for you, and the venerable Ananda would by your side. And around you in the great assembly are all the great bodhisattvas as well. Let it be just like the Dharma assembly on Magic Mountain. If you had the kind of respect, there would be no way you could fail to get enlightened. But Ananda had listened to so much of the teaching and still hadn't become enlightened. Can I become enlightened now or on first hearing it? How do you know Ananda didn't become enlightened? Maybe Ananda was intentionally pretending not to be enlightened so that the Buddha would speak the sutra and we now can hear it. Ananda became a Buddha a long time ago not to speak of his gaining any lesser enlightenment. He's just appearing as the spoken, spoke person and acting like he doesn't understand. In fact, Ananda remembered a very bit of the drama the Buddha spoke. He could not have understood the principles the Buddha is explaining here. He has long since understood and is just requesting drama on behalf of us who are living beings now. He is a model, an example for us. You should think that you're smarter than Ananda. You shouldn't think that you're smarter than Ananda. You're not. Renowned. Everyone praises the Bhagavan. Everyone respects him. Five lucky, six honored and noble. Since the little, since the title Bhagavan has three six meanings, it is not translated. Among the five kinds of terms not translated, it is the one that has many meanings. Is a single pathway through Nirvana's gate. This Dharma draw is the the one by which the Buddhas of the ten directions accomplished Buddhahood. They took the road that led to Nirvana. Sutra. When Ananda in the Great Assembly heard the unsurpassed compassionate instruction of the Buddha, the first command, this harmonious and brilliant. Gaya verse with his clear and penetrating wonderful principles. Their hearts and eyes were opened and they exclaimed that drama such as this had never been before. Commentary When Ananda and the Great Assembly heard the unsurpassed compassionate instruction of the Buddha, the first command, Ananda and everyone in the in the Great Assembly were influenced by the reiterative verse. The Buddha spoke about the one path for entrance into Nirvana, taken by all the Buddhas of the Ten Directions. Nothing could be more lofty than this compassionate explanation. This harmonious and brilliant Gaya verse, Gaya reiterated verse, recapitulates the prose which precedes it. Such verses have a fixed number of characters in each line in the Chinese, be it 4, 5, 6, or 7. This first drama is expressed in a harmonious and illuminating way. So it is said to be harmonious and brilliant, with its clear and understanding wonderful principles. This subtle wonderful principle expresses what is absolutely fundamental and essential. Their hearts and eyes are opened. Ananda and the members of the Great Assembly came to understand a great deal more doctrine than they never had before. Their minds were clearer and their eyes were brighter, and this in turn increased their wisdom. Here, eyes refers to the opening of the wisdom eye, and they exclaimed the Dharma Sutra. The Dharma suggests this had never been before. This drama is so wonderful, there's never been anything like it before.